like to do is show you how to boot your system from an ISO file that's located in the root directory of one of the partitions on your system. In my case, I only have one partition and you can see I have an ISO file saved here. So once we know where it is, we can open up our terminal and we can start to do some work from within our terminal to modify our grub settings. So now that we have verified where the file is, let's go into our terminal and we will look in that root directory that we saw graphically. We'll so we'll just cd into our root directory and do an ls command and we'll see oneric dash desktop amd64 that's where the ISO is. So that's very helpful to know. Now we can run this command. This is going to edit a particular file. So sudo gedit forward slash etsy forward slash grub dot d forward slash 40 underscore custom. This is the file that I'm going to recommend you edit anytime you want to make custom entries to your grub menu. I'm not going to explain this file other than to tell you what I put in the different lines which helps me boot this Ubuntu ISO. This line that I'm typing now will display whenever you run the update grub command. So echo and then in quotes adding 40 underscore custom entries and then you do end quote greater than and two. You can make that say whatever you want in quotes there. Just so I know what Grub is doing when it's updating. Now here are the actual lines that are going to be used when Grub makes its menu entry. So the first thing is what do you want the menu entry to be called? And so you type in menu entry, space, and then in quotes, whatever you want it to say. In this case, my newest Ubuntu daily build. Followed by a space and then an opening brace. Next line is you're going to set a variable and we're going to call it ISO file. So set ISO file equals and then in quotes the path to our ISO file it was in the root directory of that partition. So I just do a forward slash and now I want to do the name of the file. So I'm just going to remind myself what that name of that file was. So I will cd to that root directory, do an ls, and that's the name of it, oneric-desktop-amd64.iso. So that's what I'm going to type in now on this line. And once I finish with the name of the file, I close quotes. And I'm ready for my next file. Uh, my next line, excuse me. Now in this line, I'm going to do a loopback command, which basically is going to say I want you to mount this ISO as if it was a file system. So loopback, space loop, space, parentheses. Now this is the location of the partition where this ISO is found. In my case, I only have one partition, so it's HD0, which is my first hard drive, comma 1, which is the first partition. And then I put in the variable dollar sign ISO file, which will call the ISO that I set in the line above. Next line is Linux space parentheses loop on parentheses. And now the location within that ISO file where the Linux kernel is. So here it's slash Casper slash VM Linux. L-I-N-U-Z space boot equals Casper space ISO dash scan forward slash file name equals and here again we're going to need the path of the ISO file so forward slash oneric dash desktop dash AMD 64 dot ISO and you will see that because of the size of the window the commands are wrapping around to the next line, but this is actually all one line. 
after the name of the ISO file you have a space and then the word no prompt all one word and then a space and then the word no eject and then another space and then the word quiet another space and the word splash now it's not the purpose of this video to tell you what all those commands mean I just know that when you have those commands for pretty much any of the newer Ubuntu ISO files those are the commands it needs in order to be able to mount it and uh, start the CD as if it was a CD in your CD drive the next line is initrd space again parentheses loop parentheses forward slash casper forward slash initrd dot lz now I've made a typo here and I will go back and correct that before I actually boot to this because otherwise it'll give me a file not found error because I've made a typo here but because I recorded this video part before I'm doing the audio part you're not going to see me make the change right here once that's done you do a final line close brace and you save the file once that's saved the next thing you need to do is to update your grub the command for that is sudo space update dash grub what this will do is it'll look at all your partitions for installed operating systems as well as add any entries that you had in that custom file that you just made so once you've done that you are ready to reboot your system now actually before we reboot we're going to have to edit another file in order to be able to see the grub menu when we reboot otherwise it'll just reboot into the default entry again so we want to edit our Etsy default grub file and of course doing this as sudo you need root password and here's the file that we need to edit we need to go down to the line that says grub hidden timeout equals zero and we need to basically just comment out that line you do that by putting the uh, pound sign in front of that line and that way it will not count that line it's as if that line isn't there so that's what we need to do the next time we reboot instead of going right into the OS we will see the grub menu so that we can choose the different entries we have to run a sudo update grub again because anytime we make changes to any of these files we need to run this this command so that grub will be modified now let's go back and fix that typo that I pointed out earlier so we'll go through the same procedure we went through earlier we'll go into our terminal and we'll edit our 40 underscore custom file inside of Etsy grub.d put in our password and we just once that opens we just find the line with that typo instead of ls at the end it should say lz so I just delete the s and type in z save the file out very simple process and again I've made a change to one of my boot files so I need to run update dash grub again with the sudo in front of it and it will update it correcting that entry and now let's see what happens when we boot our system so let's take a look and see what happens when we reboot our system now when it uh, reboots you will see that I am using VirtualBox a virtual machine but I want to tell you that I use the same method on bare metal on my hard drive and works perfectly so now you can see the grub menu that's come up the first two entries are my currently installed OS my new entry is down at the bottom it's called my newest Ubuntu daily build so I've clicked on that and it will start booting as if it was a CD in your CD drive or a flash drive Ubuntu 11.10 and it is going to boot up and one 
difference is that you will not get to choose do you want to try the OS or install it. It will automatically boot to the desktop, which is not a big deal because once you're at the desktop, you can install it just by double clicking the icon to install it. But this is just a wonderful way, I think, to be able to continually test different distros, um, current daily builds of Ubuntu. If you look at one of my previous videos, you'll see where I showed how you can keep on your local hard drive the latest daily image of the Ubuntu operating system if you're into testing alpha and beta software like that. So here we are at the desktop. I could just double click there and install the operating system or I could continue to use it in the live environment. Well, right now I will go ahead and reboot it again. And this time when it comes back up, I will go back to the original operating system that I had installed. So you can see that nothing has really changed on my hard drive. Now one thing I did want to show you is if you highlight the entry, the new entry that we did, my newest Ubuntu daily build, and press E, then you can see all the commands. This is what we entered in our custom file. So the set ISO file, loopback, Linux, and init RD lines. So that's all in there exactly as we typed it. But as I said, I'm going to reboot into my normal operating system that's already installed on my hard drive. Well, I hope this has been interesting to you and hopefully you'll be able to incorporate this in your own system. I will tell you that each distribution is going to have different parameters and different commands that you will need to put in that custom grub file. They unfortunately are not all the same so it will take some researching on Google which is how I found out what commands to put in there to figure out actually what commands will work in order for grub to see that ISO and be able to boot from it as if it was a CD. But I highly recommend you give this a try, especially if you're tired of burning all these CDs and installing and uninstalling. This is a really harmless way to do all those things. So until the next time, thank you for watching. Oh, uh -huh.